I'm joined now by the moderators of the general hepatology update on Sunday. Dr. Rohit Lumba from the University of California at San Diego and Dr. Fred Pordod from UT Health Science Center. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for being here. You. Can you give us an overview of this update? We're really excited about this uh, general hepatology update because this is one of the most well attended programs in uh, uh, the meeting. And in this particular session, we'll have three speakers and they'll be discussing uh, post-transplant immunosuppression, um, management of hepatorenal syndrome, and uh, management of autoimmune hepatitis. These are important diseases and there are certain caveats associated with their management. And I think all the three speakers will cover this. And at the end, Fred and I plan on having a very exciting uh, interactive discussion with the audience. So let's go through those one by one and expand on them a little bit. The long-term care of liver cancer patients. Uh, yeah, so it's the liver transplant patients. And uh, it's going to be a topic, I think, that becomes more and more important because the population that we're transplanting is aging. And so they're now encountering other problems that uh, maybe in the past we, we hadn't focused on heart disease, cancers after transplantation, uh, decline in renal function. So I think it'll be a very good overview and kind of prep the audience for what's to come because the demographics of who we're transplanting is actually changing over time. And you have to adjust as such. What about the current guidelines for hepatorenal syndrome? Uh, hepatorenal syndrome is um, a, a, a very important, but uh, uh, a disease with high mortality. Um, in patients, um, can have uh, really a downhill course and we really don't have very good therapies. And so new clinical trials are emerging in this area. Um, diagnoses are changing. Um, it's a syndrome, so definition is based upon um, several um, bullet points that somebody has to go through and, and then make a checklist to really know if patient really has a bad renal syndrome or this is related to infection or some other cause. Because many a times, um, people are labeled as hepatorenal syndrome, but they truly do not fit into the criteria. And uh, Dr. Wong is going to discuss that. She's a world expert in hepatorenal syndrome and management of ascites. And I think this will be a very exciting um, topic because things are just about to change in this disease area with new therapies. And the diagnosis is as critical, really, as the therapies and treatment. And last but not least, autoimmune hepatitis. Yeah, I think uh, Michael Hennigan's going to cover this topic, which many people know a little bit about, but very few people know a lot about. And I think uh, the data is, has been slow to, to evolve in this arena, but I think it's a very important disease state. And um, most clinicians are good at taking care of simple autoimmune hepatitis, but it's the complex cases that can be very problematic. And I think uh, Michael will give a very good overview on how to take care of not just the simple, but the more complex autoimmune patient. I totally agree. This is going to be a very exciting talk because a uh, garden variety of autoimmune hepatitis responds very well to prednisone. And then we all get stuck when we have a young patient who's not responding to prednisone, what next to be done? And so I think there are newer therapies. Uh, the trials are very small in autoimmune hepatitis. Therefore, you really need and depend on expert opinion. And uh, Dr. Hennigan will cover this topic very well for our audience. It is through meetings like this and coming together and sharing this information that I think truly helps patients. Dr. Lumba, Dr. Fordad, thank you so much for being here. Thank you.